Howdy everybody, welcome back to Accounting 1101. Professor Martin here with you today, coming to you from the home accounting headquarters here in Wilmington, Ohio. Our video today, we are going to do an entire month of accounting for our sample business. We're going to be tackling the month of December. We're going to journalize transactions. We're gonna post them over to our ledger accounts. And so we have 18 count them 18 transactions we're going to tackle today uh, to kind of help you along i've posted my notes to canvas i would encourage you to download the powerpoint notes and kind of fill them out as we go along make it a little bit interactive hopefully will help you uh, make things a little bit more concrete make things stick a little bit quicker for you so we're going to journalize to do that you need to know what the journal looks like right we've already seen the accounting journal it uh, looks just like that. We're going to have a column for the date, a column for the accounts, a column for our posting reference, which we'll post in a little bit, and then debit and the credit of the transaction. Second part, we're going to take our transactions, post them over to our ledger accounts. We've seen ledger accounts already in our last video. We have an account for every account in the accounting system. Every account has a ledger account. And here you can see a cash ledger account. We have an account number. We have the date of the transaction, a posting reference, where it came from in the journal, the debit or credit for the transaction, and then a running balance column. All right. Before that, we spent a lot of time talking about T accounts, debits and credits, and uh, what debit means, what credit means in accounting, left and right. And we talked about how the two sides of an account work together to kind of tell us whether an account is going up or down with any given transaction. We went through all the rules involved. And we may still be trying to learn those rules. That's okay. I encourage you to print off the slide we're looking at here. Maybe keep a cheat sheet at your homework desk there. Whatever you need to do, feel free to refer back to your notes. No shame in that whatsoever. We refer back to them until we have it memorized. As I mentioned in our video right now, we're going to tackle an entire month of accounting for Net Solutions. We're going to be looking at the month of December. We're going to record transactions in the journal, and then we're going to post them over to the ledger. Same business that we worked on in November, Net Solutions, a service business making web pages. Chris Clark is our hero, our founder, and he began Net Solutions on November 1, 20 through. So here we go, 18 transactions. And again, I encourage you to print off the notes. You can kind of write in the transactions as we go along. Net Solutions on December 1 paid a premium of 2,400 for an insurance policy for their liability theft and fire insurance. The policy is for an entire year. So here we go, we got a new account in play here. You can see down here at the bottom, I got an account called prepaid insurance. Set up prepaid insurance is an asset account. Kind of the same idea if maybe you went to Walmart and bought a prepaid phone card. If anybody still does that these days, you know, let's say you buy a hundred dollar prepaid phone card and you stick it in your wallet or your purse. Well, you have a hundred dollars of prepaid expenses in your purse or wallet and you use it up as you use it up. So when you have it, you haven't used it, it's an asset. Kind of like supplies. We saw our supply closet in the last video where we keep the supplies in the supply closet and then we use them up. The ones we haven't used are an asset. Exact same idea here. The insurance we haven't used is an asset. If we buy an entire year up front, we have 12 months of an asset. We use it up month by month and expense it as we use it. All right, so right now we have an asset account for prepaid insurance. We need to dump 2,400 into that we paid for it in cash. So I'm gonna pause, give you all a second to think about that, maybe try to write out the entry, and then we'll show you what the entry ought to be. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to think about that. Again, we're trying to make our cash account go down. We're going to add to the prepaid insurance account. Because both of those accounts are on the asset side, they're both going to go up on the debit side and they're going to go down on the credit side, the right-hand side. If cash needs to come down because we spent it, we'd be looking at a credit to the cash account. If prepaid insurance needs to go up, 
we would need a debit. So that's what our entry is going to look like right there. Prepaid insurance debit, cash credit. We bought a one-year insurance policy. Let's move on to the next one. December 1, again, Net Solutions paid rent for December. Paying the month of December rent. We got two accounts in play here. You can see we have a cash account. Because we'll be paying cash, we need to make that cash account go down. Rent expense, our rent expense, any expense account. When we have an expense, we need to make that expense go up. All right, so think about our rules for debit and credit. Asset accounts on the left-hand side of the accounting equation go up on the left. They go down on the right. Expense accounts always, always, always go up on the debit side. So think about that for a second. See if you can write out your journal entry for the month of December rent. There we go, debit to rent expense, a credit to cash. Hopefully you came up with that. If you didn't, make a correction. Accountants are not very good at using pens. We don't want to use pens. We don't have to make a bunch of black marks. We want to make sure that we uh, use pencils. If in case you mess up, and just erase it. All right, make it a little bit neater. Uh, but hopefully you got it right and we don't have to erase anything. Next one, December 1, Net Solutions rents out the land they bought on November 5th. The term is for three entire months, and the tenant pays it all up front in advance. And so you might remember we bought a piece of land at the very beginning in November, and now we're renting it out. Apparently, the tenant wants to use it for a parking lot. We're not going to let them do that for free. We're going to charge them. All right, so we have two different accounts in play here. We have a cash account, obviously, because we're going to be collecting three months of rent in advance. We're also going to have a new account called unearned rent. Unearned means we haven't earned it. We've been given money that we haven't earned. When someone gives you money and you haven't earned it yet, you have a liability to that person to either give them the service or the product that they paid for or give them their money back if you can't provide it, right? So we have a liability. The tenant has paid three months of rent in advance. We'll take their money, but now we're liable to them to provide a service. In this case, the service being rent. So our cash account needs to go up to reflect the fact that we collected 360. And now we have a liability. The liability needs to go up. All right. Think back to our rules of debit and credit on the left-hand side of the accounting equation. Goes up on the left. On the right-hand side of the accounting equation, goes up on the right. Unearned rent. All right, take a second, see if you can figure that out. Pause the video if you need to, and then we'll show you what that's going to look like. So there we go. Our entry would be a debit to cash, 360 to make that cash account go up, and then we'd have a credit to our new account on earned rent. That's our liability to provide three entire months of rent. And if you think, okay, so how much would it be per month? Well, if we took 360 bucks from the tenant for three months of rent, that's 120 bucks a month that we're going to earn. We'll earn 120 of it in December, 120 of it in January, 120 of it in February until that liability is gone. We'll talk about how to make that journal entry next week in our adjusting entries chapter. All right, moving right along. December 4, Net Solutions bought office equipment on account from executive supply company. So office equipment is an asset. You can think of maybe furniture, you can think of maybe it's a computer, telephone, copying machine, fax machine, whatever. Office equipment is an asset. We bought it on account, meaning we didn't pay cash. We're gonna pay later on. Buy now, pay later. When we buy on account, that's an account's payable. So we're going to pay later on. Remember, anytime you see that word payable, that means you owe somebody some money. At some point, you're going to have to pay them. Office equipment needs to go up. Accounts payable needs to go up. We have more office equipment now, and now we also have a liability to go along with it. Remember our rules of debit and credit? Left-hand side goes up on the left. 
right hand side goes up on the right for liability. So take a second, pause the video again, and we will see how you did on that entry. So there we go. A debit to office equipment, 1800 and a credit to accounts payable. We bought equipment on account. Working our way through 18 transactions here. If you need to pause, take a break anytime, feel free to do so. This video is going to be a little bit longer than some of the other ones, just because we have so many transactions to get through. Busy day in the accounting headquarters here in Wilmington. December 6th, Net Solutions paid 180 bucks for a newspaper ad. Two accounts in play here. Our cash account needs to come down. Paid cash, 180 bucks. And our expense account, miscellaneous expenses, needs to go up. Okay, you think about our rules again. On the left-hand side of the accounting equation, assets go up on the left. They go down on the right. Up on the debit, down on the credit. Expenses always, always, always go up on the debit side. We go down on the credit. So we usually don't have credit to expense accounts unless we mess something up or as we learn later on, we close out the account. Normally when we're making entries for expenses, it's going to be a debit. So take that piece of information, that little accounting tidbit, see if you can make our journal entry here. There we go. Miscellaneous expense, debit, 180. Cash, credit, 180. Now you might look at that and say, well, uh, Professor Martin, why don't we just say, instead of having miscellaneous, why don't we call it advertising expense? Hey, we could totally do that. We could just have an account called advertising expense if we wanted to make it more specific. In fact, that's probably the way it would work in real life. Okay, the key is we're calling it an expense. That way we know what kind of an account it is. The first part is just a descriptive, all right? Miscellaneous, utilities, wages, advertising. The expense part tells us where that account lives as far as income statement or balance sheet. Expenses live on the income statement. First part is just describing what kind of an expense it is. So yeah, we could totally call it advertising expense. We're not though because our example is calling it miscellaneous. December 11th, paid 400 on account to our creditors. We have accounts payable going on that we owe, and now we're paying some of that money back. Go back to our rules here. Left-hand side of the accounting equation, balance sheet accounts, asset, go up on the left, down on the right. Right-hand side of the accounting equation, goes up on the right, down on the left. You might be saying, oh my gosh, how many times is he going to say the exact same thing? I'm going to tell you, he's going to say the exact same thing until we all have it memorized. So uh, if you've got it memorized already, just feel free to tune that part out. But I'm going to keep saying it. Words are free and I, I, I can use all the words I want to. YouTube will let me put videos up as long as I want to. So we're just going to keep saying it. All right. So what we're trying to do here, we're paying off $400 to our creditors. Our cash account's going to go down. And our accounts payable is going to go down because we will owe $400 less after we pay that back. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can make that entry. Ah, there we go. Accounts payable is going to be a debit. Accounts payable is going to go down. The cash account is going to go down. Paid our creditors on account. Let's keep the accounting train rolling. December 13th. Net Solutions paid their employees $950 for two weeks of wages. Employees work two weeks. They want to get paid. What accounts are in play here? We have a cash account in play. Our cash account is going to need to go down to reflect the fact that we paid $950. Bucks. We need to make the cash account go down. Wages expense is going to go up to show that we've paid Incurred, I should say, we've incurred $950 worth of wages. Wages always go, I'm sorry, expenses always go up on the debit side. All right, take a second, see if you can make that entry. Here's what we've come up with. We have a debit to wages expense. We have a credit to the cash account. Paid December 1 through 13 wages. Paid two weeks of wages right there. 
Moving right along, December 16th, we had a $3,100 amount paid in fees on a job completed during December. So our business is set up to do consulting and website design. We designed a website for a client. We completed the job in December and the client paid in December, paid $3,100 for that job. So we have two accounts going on here. We have our cash account. We have our revenue account, fees earned. Here's a revenue account. Our cash account needs to go up, doesn't it? We've collected money. We've collected $3,100. Assets go up on the debit side, down on the credit side. Our revenue account. Revenue accounts always go up on the credit side. It's supposed to be a plus right there. I really boogered that up, didn't I? Oh, well. So... Our revenue needs to go up. We've collected revenue. We've earned revenue. Let's go ahead and make that entry. Think about that for a second. Pause it if you need to. See if you can make that entry. Should look a little bit like you see right here. Our cash account's going to go up on the debit side. Our fees earned, our revenue account, goes up on the credit side. Received cash for a completed job. Sometimes we don't get cash when we complete the job. Sometimes we let the customer pay later on. We let them buy now and pay later. When that happens, we call that an account receivable. You can see that right here in the next transaction on December 16th. We completed a job. We did the job. We have earned 1,750 in fees. We're done with the work. We've made the website, but the client will pay later. We didn't get any cash right now because we said, hey, client, you know what? You can pay us later on. We do that in business to kind of encourage people to buy from us, don't we? And you think, okay, well, maybe they don't have the money to pay right now. We'll let them pay in a month. That way, they may be more likely to buy from us. All right. So, two accounts in play here. We have accounts receivable, which is an asset. Anytime you see the word receivable in an account, that means we're getting money down the road. We expect to receive money. Receivable. It's an asset. Okay? I expect at some point the client will give me money. I have a receivable. I expect to receive money. It's not a payable. Payable. I owe somebody money. I want to pay it. Receivable. Somebody owes me money. I expect to receive it. All right. So that's an asset. As an asset, it's going to go up on the debit side and down on the credit side. We know we want that account to go up to reflect the fact that we are owed money. We have that receivable. Fees earned, again, is our revenue account. It goes up on the credit. Very rarely will we see a debit to a revenue account, again, unless we messed it up and we're trying to fix it, or we're closing it out, which we'll get to later on. Trying to make that revenue account go up to reflect the fact that we've earned $1,750. We've done the job. We've completed it. Even though we haven't been paid yet, we still count the revenue. So here we go. We have a debit to accounts receivable. There we go. $1,750. And a credit to fees earned. $1,750. That client now owes us $1,750. December 20th. Man. So many transactions in December. Can we not get Christmas break yet? Do accountants get Christmas break? No, they don't, unfortunately. That solution's paid $900 on account to Executive Supply Company on the $1,800 debt from December 4th. Remember, we bought office equipment for $1,800. We did buy now, pay later. We bought on account, which means we had an account payable where we owed Executive Supply Company. And so now we're paying back half of what we owe. We're paying back 900. All right. We have our cash account. We need to make that cash account go down because we're paying cash out the door. We need to make accounts payable go down because we don't owe that 900 bucks anymore once we pay it. So that's what we have going on here. Go back to our rules on debit and credit. Remember, asset accounts go up on the debit. Go down on the credit side. Accounts payable. Go up on the credit side. Down on the debit side. 
So think about that. See if you can make our entry to record the transaction to pay back part of our accounts payable. There we go. We have a debit to accounts payable and a credit to the cash account. December 21, Net Solutions received 650 from customers in payment of their accounts. So remember, we did some work for a customer. We said, hey, customer, you can pay later on. Not to pay us in cash right now. The customer said, great. They left. And now they sent us a check for part of what they owed. Or maybe they just came into the office and had 650 bucks and just made it rain. They threw the money up in the air. Cash, dollar bills, just raining down on us. Either way, $650 in cash has come our way. And so a couple of accounts in play here. We have a cash account in play. We have our account receivable in play. I've also got fees earned here. It's not really in play. I'll explain why in a moment. But 650 coming in the door. We know we need to make the cash account go up. We need to make accounts receivable go down because once that customer pays, we don't have that $650. Um, they don't have that $650 debt to us anymore. They paid that off. So I'm not expecting to receive it once it's been paid, right? So cash needs to go up. Accounts receivable needs to go down. Our rules on the asset side of the accounting equation. Everything goes up on the debit side, down on the credit side. So here we go. Cash goes up 650. The receivable goes down 650 because we're not owed that 650 anymore. It's no longer receivable because we have received it. Now, you say, wait a second. Why well, does it have anything to do with fees earned? We're collecting money from a customer and we're collecting our fee, aren't we? Yeah, but here's the deal. If you remember way back when we originally recorded the transaction, we recorded the fees earned, right? We recorded all that we earned, the entire job. So we've already recorded the revenue on that. We can't record it a second time just because the customer's paying what they owed. If we recorded a second time, we would be double counting revenue. And we have a really fancy term for what happens or what it's called when we double count revenue in accounting. You ready for that term? It's called fraud. And we don't want to commit fraud. We don't want to be creative. We don't want to go to jail for cooking the books. I'm trying to teach you all to be good ethical accountants. Ethical accountants don't commit fraud. So don't count revenue twice. We've already counted it when we completed the job. We don't count it a second time just because the customer pays us for the job, all right? That's why we're not hitting that revenue fees earned again. We've already counted it for that job. Keeping you all out of jail here. December 23rd, Net Solutions paid $14.50 for supplies. Buying some supplies here, looks like we're paying for them in cash, means we got two accounts in play. We have our supplies account, which we need to make go up. We have our cash account, which is going to go down. You all probably figured this out by now. Go ahead and see if you can make that transaction. Hopefully you were able to do that and you came up with a debit to our supplies asset account. We bought 1,450 of supplies, kept them in a supply closet, and we'll use them up as we need them. We paid for it using cash. Cash account has to come down. Supplies account goes up, all right? We're getting near the end of the month. Christmas is come and gone, and now we're going to pay our employees $1,200 for two weeks of wages earned in that second half of December right there. So, I skipped ahead. I didn't even get to do my whole spiel. We're just gonna roll with it. Uh, we've done this entry anyway. Debit the expense account, credit the cash account. As you can see here, that credit to cash makes the account go down. Our Expenses always go up on the debit side. And so there you have that one. How about this? We are at the end of the month. A few transactions to record here at the end of the month, and we will have completed December. Net Solutions paid $310 for a telephone bill for the month of December, $310. Our cash account needs to come down to reflect that. Utilities expense is going to go up. We know expenses go up on the debit side. And we know assets go 
down on the credit side. So with that being said, see if you can make that entry happen. There we go, utility expense debit, cash credit. That is for the telephone bill. The very next entry is for the electric bill for the month. Again, exact same idea, utilities expense, cash going on. I'm not gonna make a big spill out of it. We literally just did that exact entry. Different amount now, we're talking 225 for the electric bill for the month of December. December 31, Net Solutions was paid $28.70 in fees on a job completed during the second half of December. So here's another one where we have completed the job. The customer pays as soon as the job is done. Cash account in play. And we need to count that revenue, fees earned, make the revenue account go up. Cash goes up on the debit. Revenue increases on the credit side always. So it's going to look just like that. Cash goes up, fees earned, our revenue account is credited. Going to make that go up as well. Finally, one more sell transaction here. We completed a job for $1,120 in fees. Your customer is going to pay later on. We have another account receivable scenario. Customer is going to get the job completed and then they'll pay later on. So accounts receivable needs to go up. We need to add to that. And then our revenue is going to go up as well because we did our part. We completed the job. So there you go. Accounts receivable debit and fees earned credit. Our final transaction, the owner after doing all of that work in the month of December is going to take out $2,000 and throw a big New Year's Eve party. I don't know what he's gonna do with it. Don't really care because again, in accounting, we don't care what happens on the personal side. We're just concerned about the business. Two separate things. Business entity is a distinct thing. Owner's going to take out 2000 bucks. We've seen this transaction before. Cash comes down. Drawing is kind of like an expense account. And how we account for it, it goes up on the expense side. Uh, on the debit side, has a normal debit balance. And so Chris Clark drawing 2000 Cash, 2000 so next thing we need to do is post all of those transactions. And I'm sure your heart just sunk because we just went through 18 transactions and you wrote all these out and you're like, oh my goodness. So if you need to take a little break, go ahead. That's fine. You can kind of pause, come back to it. But I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple on how we post. Just to remind you and then you can do the remainder and we'll show you uh Maybe the uh, solution post that. That way you don't have to do them all one by one and make a, an hour long video here. So let me go ahead and bring up my spreadsheet. There we go. On the journal tab, we have all of the transactions that we just went through. And literally all 18 of them right there for your viewing pleasure. As before, we have a tab for the asset account all the ledger uh, accounts for the assets, liabilities and equity, and revenue and expenses. We got a ledger account for every single account. All right. You'll notice all the stuff we did in November is still in there. We didn't do anything else with it. It's still hanging out there waiting for us to do something with it. So what I'd like you to do now is go through and post all of our transactions that we made over to the ledger accounts. I'll do the first couple for you. I'll let you do the remainder. I'll post our solution. That way you can check your work. So here we go. December 1, prepaid insurance, asset account, $2,400 debit. Prepaid insurance right there on the asset ledger tab. December 1. We're on page number two now of our journal. You can't really see it. Page two. There we go. So 2400 have a $2,400 debit balance and prepaid insurance. So that's account number 15. We'll come. Posting reference 15 on a journal. That way we know it got posted. We paid for that with cash. We have a cash credit of 2400 So we'll come back to my cash account here. December 1, page number 2, 2400. We are down to 3500 in cash. Holy smokes, we need to sell some stuff and get some jobs completed, get some cash in the door here, right? 
make that cash account come up. We will post it. Number 11, post it. There we go. December 1, rent expense, 800. Find that rent expense account. December 1, 800. We have a running balance of 1,600 in rent expense now. That was account 53. We posted it. Our cash account, we'll go ahead and take 800 out of that as well. So now we're down to 2,700 in that cash account. Ooh, running low in the old cash account. So that's the idea. Remember, when we post our transactions, we don't flip them. We don't reverse them. However, we wrote them out in the journal is how we're going to put it in the ledger. So if it's a debit in the journal, we're going to put a debit on the ledger account, right? Don't flip it, don't reverse it. The other thing is, don't leave anything out. The reason I am so meticulous about putting these posting references in is because they tell me, hey, you've posted it. And so what will happen is, if I've got an 11 here, but I don't have anything for unearned rent, and I've got posting references there, it tells me, oh, wait, I skipped it. I skipped the unearned rent part. I need to make sure I go back and post it. All right? So what I'd like you to do, before we get too far down the road here and it becomes like an hour long video, I'd like you to go through and post all the remaining entries here. Okay, I've done the first two for you. Go ahead and post all of the other one and practice getting your account balances calculated, getting everything in there. What I'm going to do in Canvas, I will post a key or a solution. That way you can go back and check your work against it. Make sure that you have everything correct. Where we're leading, what we're going to do, our next step here, is we're going to be making what we call an unadjusted trial balance. We're going to get all of those final balances on the ledger accounts, and we're going to put them into a trial balance to make sure our accounting system is in balance. That's our next video. Won't be a half an hour long video. It'll be real short, uh, because once we have those ending balances calculated, it's going to be real easy from there to come up with this document that we're seeing. I'm going to explain why we need a trial balance, what purpose it serves, and how we make it in our next video. If you're working through that, if you didn't get the uh, amounts right on the ledger, and you tried to post them, didn't work out for you, maybe you got some of the transactions wrong as we were practice, uh, practicing those, and you can't really figure out why, you don't understand why a transactions made a certain way, hey, let's talk about that, because that's something that we need to know. Give me your example, tell me what is going on, and we'll try to help you figure it out in a way that makes sense for you. Okay, again, very important early on in accounting that we get questions answered. Don't wait. Don't wait until week five, week six, week seven, when you know, we pile 10 more things on top of it, and now you're just way out in the weeds, you know, and you can't be found. Ask your questions as they come up. Email me if we need to. We can set up a time for tutoring, virtual meetings, whatever we need to do to get you where you need to be. I'm willing to put in the work. Hopefully, you're willing to put in the work too if you need that kind of help. Until next time, take care, everybody.